Hi guys, my name is Christine and I'm a dating, relationship and personal development coach and today I'm talking about letting go of past heartbreak. So it can be really difficult to to get over um, breakups, over people that we've been crushing on for a long time and perhaps it didn't work out with, perhaps you didn't, your love wasn't reciprocated. You know, it's very difficult to get over these past heartbreaks, right? It's not an easy thing to do. And there will probably always be some part of you that will wonder what if, and you know, if things had been different, you know, these kinds of things. Um, but eventually what, what happens is these feelings become less intense over time, which is why I put an important emphasis on how time is curative and time is a great healer and why it's a good idea if you've had a heartbreak, if you've been dumped or if you've gone through a situation where there was unreciprocated love, you know, to give yourself time to get over it, right? Um, because if you don't give yourself time to get over it and you go into a rebound or you keep yourself stuck by doing things that are unhealthy for you, like overanalyzing old messages that they sent you, um, looking through old photos or going on their social media profiles and looking through those, those kinds of things are gonna keep you stuck. And it's not a good idea to go into a rebound because often what happens is you bring all that past baggage from that old relationship into a new one and if you're still heartbroken then it's going to cause a lot of rifts in your new relationship it's not a really healthy way to start if you're not quite over the other person right it's not a good way to go and ultimately you can actually cause heartbreak for the new person that you're you're now seeing because for example, your ex or this person that you're thinking of may actually come back into your life. And then if your emotions are still more invested in your ex or this this other person, then you're more likely to actually go back to them. And now you could actually leave this new person that you've started to see heartbroken, right? So it's not a good idea to, to do that, which is why it's important that you give yourself time, right? And basically how you'll know you're ready to um, start a new relationship or you know that you're getting over it and you're starting to feel better is that you are starting to feel better you don't feel as intensely towards the heartbreak okay so that's the place where you need to get to where you don't feel as intensely about it okay and that's how you know that you can start a new relationship okay so one thing that can help is, and I've already touched on it a little bit, is dwelling on the past never serves you, okay? Which is why I don't condone looking back through old messages that they sent you, looking through their social media profiles, listening to songs that remind you of them re repeatedly, just dwelling on them too much, right? Because that's not gonna help you, right? That's actually gonna keep you stuck and prevent you from healing and getting over them. Right? And obviously this video is about letting go of past heartbreak. Because what you're doing is you're essentially opening an old wound by doing that. By experiencing the same emotions and the same feelings. By going through those old messages. By listening to those same songs. And whatever else you may be doing that keeps you thinking about them. Okay, And if you keep on opening up an old wound, it doesn't heal. right? But you need it to heal. Okay, So don't open up these old wounds wounds okay because you're not you're gonna be you go you just go straight back to square one when you do those kinds of things okay and it's not helpful to you right so dwelling on the past will never serve you so what can you do then because obviously if you've got a lot of habits already surrounding this ex of yours or this person this special person that you're thinking of that you're finding it hard to let go of so if you've been dwelling on them a lot then what the, when you stop doing those things, what it does is it creates a vacuum because you've now got this time that used to be spent on thinking about them, and dwelling on them, and now that time, now you're, not, you're trying not to do those things anymore. So now there's a, like a, a black hole of where that was, right? There's like times of your day that you used to spend focused on them, and now you've got nothing in those time slots. So it's a good idea to find new hobbies, new things to do, during those times that used to be just required, that you used to set aside for your ex, whether you thought, you know, actually set them aside purposefully or not, right? Um, and I recommend that you fill those time spaces with ways to boost your self esteem, because if you've had your heart stomped on and you've had your heart broken, right, and you're going through heartbreak, then 
obviously you don't feel that great, right? Obviously your self-esteem has been knocked. Perhaps you don't feel very lovable. Perhaps you don't feel very good looking. Perhaps it's really affected your self-image. So the best thing that you can do then is now that you have all this time on your hands, now that you've stopped dwelling so much on your ex, to, fo to, to focus on doing activities that boost your self-esteem, right? Obviously one of those great ones is exercise, right? That can really help, okay? Um, if, if you start to feel better in your body, if you start to look better in your body, right? That's a great way that you can boost your self-esteem. Like one of the one of the great ones that I always find is like if I I really notice a change in my body when I'm doing like weightlifting because obviously like you gain muscle so you can actually see like the outlines on your like clothes and things so I highly recommend that you know you get into some form of like weightlifting obviously go somewhere where it's safe maybe where someone can spot you like a gym um, or maybe you've got a friend that can help you out with that sort of thing. Um, so obviously wherever you go to do weightlifting, make sure that you're somewhere that's safe because you can actually cause a lot of damage on your body if you don't know how to lift correctly, right? So make sure then that you are, you know, looking after your body because that's one of the best ways that you can boost your self-esteem and make you feel good about yourself. Another thing as well is to get a few goals for yourself. Get a few goals that you can work towards because we are ultimately goal striving creatures okay and perhaps your goal for a while has been to try and get this person back try and get your ex back right perhaps that's been your goal for a while um and whether you realized it or not it was a goal right so you got to get some new goals for yourself it could be financial goals it could be career goals it could be exercise goals it could be some kind of like business side hustle goal you know um but just something that's really important to you that you find passionate that you they, that makes you feel passionate that makes you feel ambitious that makes you excited right and that's another way that you can boost your self-esteem because if you feel like you're being productive and you're moving your life ahead and you're doing things that you enjoy and it brings you a lot of passion and inspiration you're going to feel really good and that's going to boost your self-esteem too so doing those kinds of activities can really really help okay so another thing about um letting go of past heartbreak is even though it may not feel like it now, pain is actually one of the best teachers, you know, because success, you know, being successful, you know, is not really a great teacher. In fact, sometimes it can make you complacent and lazy, right, if you have quite a few wins, a few successes. But what really makes someone think is when they've gone through a painful experience. That's something that really helps someone reflect, right? Um, and what I've discovered is that the most painful experiences in my life have ultimately led me to new understandings because I searched basically for like how can I get over this how can I um, turn this situ situation around right and it's from those failures that I've gained more experience from and actually have made me stronger and better and heartbreak is no um is, is, is one of those things basically right I remember um the, the situation that got me into learning about dating and relationships you know and, and coaching and that sort of thing was because I had a crush on a girl who just didn't feel the same way about me even though we were both lesbians and it really confused me at the time because I thought well, well I'm I'm a lesbian you're a lesbian why is it not working out <laughs> I don't understand <laughs> right and I had this like really dumb view of things because I was young I was like um about 22 I think right um, I'm now 31 and so you know and so that that got me like how can I win her back that's what ultimately I was trying to search for I was like how can I make her more interested in me right and that's why I was searching for and then I came across loads of different coaches work um like for example uh, Miri Dubeck that was the one uh, another one that during that time was Dating Logic and Coach Corey Wayne uh, Mark Manson stuff you know there was lots of things that I dived into to try and figure this stuff out and how I could re-attract her and ultimately I learned way new different things I learned that actually there wasn't really much I could do if she wasn't that interested in me um, you know there was a few things I could do but ultimately those action steps were nothing to do with taking action and trying to convince her and be in her dms or anything it was actually the opposite of that it was actually to go into no contact and to not push and pursue right um, but what I learned from that experience was that she was never interested in me in interested in me because she never reached out to me and things like that 
but it was a great teacher. It was a great lesson. And from learning all of those things, I started to become obsessed with those things. I started to become obsessed with like how to have healthy relationships, uh, date, dating techniques. And then it just, it became a huge part of my life and I loved it to the point where I now can, I know enough to, to be able to help people from, you know, let's that, say, for example, who were at where I once was and lift them up right, to a better place um, where they can, you know, now have better knowledge and have the same knowledge that I do, which is why I give all of my information away for free, right, this is why I make YouTube videos, because anyone can log on to YouTube, create an account, and you don't even have to create an account on YouTube to watch my videos or anything like that, right, you can just watch it all for free, right, because that's what I ultimately want to be able to give back to the world, you know, I want to be able to make healthy relationships, because if you create healthy relationships, right, and you, you help and you steer people and guide people to, to learn about those things themselves and to teach people about those things, then that means there'll be healthier families, right, and healthier children, and the next generation of children will have healthier and happier relationships, and there are a lot of other coaches who are doing the same kind of work that I am, so hopefully we'll be able to all collectively bring up a new generation of children who know how to have healthy relationships because they've seen it from their parents, right, so it's been one of the greatest teachers for me, pain and heartbreak. And it can do the same things for you. There may be someone watching this who may be so inspired right now that they're going to do the same thing that I did and actually help other people become, you know, better at dating and relationships and getting over heartbreak and stuff, right? So, you know, who knows, okay? So pain can be one of the greatest teachers. So don't let this, this situation defeat you. Let it inspire you, essentially, okay? So another thing that can help as well, just quickly, is getting a better understanding of dating and relationships as a whole, right? Because obviously you don't want these kinds of things to happen again in your life. So getting a good understanding of, you know, how to have a healthy relationship so it doesn't actually break up, so you don't actually break up. Obviously dating techniques so you can actually find someone who it's very unlikely that you're going to split up with, right? And things like that. And just getting a better understanding of those areas so you can have a healthy happy normal relationship that isn't toxic that doesn't end right because if you learn how to do those things and you learn how to do those things effectively and you keep up with it and you keep yourself studying those things over time then you're going to have a great and healthy relationship and this kind of thing will never happen to you again so thank you so much for watching if you'd like to get in touch with me personally and you'd like coaching with me then please go to www.christineloverage.com and i shall talk to you again very soon goodbye